What's going on everyone? Welcome to another video. We're just getting in the inlet right now. It's a cold, brisk morning. We're out of Fort Pierce, but out with Captain Trev again and our boy Brian, and we caught some pretty nice fish. Let's get it, let's get to fishing. Dang, I was so close to doing it perfect. Let's get to fishing. We started out the morning by heading over to these buoys that usually hold some type of bait. The first couple we went to had nothing on them at all. The last one that we hit happened to have a bunch of small blue runners, which will work great in a pinch if you're not catching anything like thread fins or sardines or like that, anything like that. These buoys are exceptionally hard to actually land your bait though because they are covered in barracudas. And these barracudas are trained that as soon as you hook a bait, they will swim over, grab that bait on your sabiki, and usually cut your sabiki off, which turns into a really expensive morning just to catch a couple live baits. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going. Oh! A little baby mutton. Little baby mutton. The next goal of the day was to get out and do some bottom fishing and be pretty opportunistic to anything that comes around. Brian mentioned to Trevor and I that he really, really wanted to catch a mahi. So we had our eyes out and we had some live baits out with hopes that a mahi might swim up to the boat while we're targeting snapper and other bottom fish. Nice dolphin. Good eye. Good eye. Though. Just keep that line tight. That's all you gotta do. Wait, don't, don't, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> All right, watch your foot. Boy. Dude, got your hey, dolphin, son. Good job, man. And you spotted it. Yeah, I know. He's like, hey, guys, look. There's a dolphin right there. Nice bull. Nice bull. Oh, yeah. Mr. Mangrove, come on up. A little mang action. Nice little keeper mangrove. Probably a 14, 15 inch fish. And he just spit up my bait. Oh, stomach came out. Hey, bud. A pretty fish man bright orange and pink there we go let's send you into the ice box my friend you are coming home for dinner well better watch out brian i'm catching up happy learned how to put got something smaller oh a little runner dog Could be what's oh, look at the shark. Mangy. Oh, little mangy. Yeah, the shark's definitely not helping the, uh, the sh yeah, the snapper bite at all. Little runner. Oh. Why you got to be so cold? Dude. <laughs> That's a big mahi, son. When you hear that sound, just let him run. Keep, keep the line tight, keep the line tight. It's something that you'll get a feel for over time, but you wanna try not to reel against the drag. Yeah, you're good, you're good. No, I didn't get a left. <laughs> <laughs> so pick up, reel down. There you go, pick up, reel down. And see how you're not reeling against the drag when you do that? Yeah, yeah. big difference. Yes, sir. Beauty. Nice mahi. I was so confused when I heard that sound. I like completely forgot we had a rod out. 
fun with that. This one's actually fighting you. The other one didn't even know what hit him. You just reeled him straight to the boat, power cranked him. Yes, sir. This is why my here funny because it was like some will act like that first one you hooked and some will just fight you hard. Yeah. No, nah, he's not giving up easy on you, Brian. I'm gonna fight you the whole way. It's so weird how there's just been one. Yep. Oh no, there's a there's a baller. I was just getting ready to say we should throw, keep him. It's fine. Let Brian do his thing. Can catch two mahis, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same time, one in each. <laughs> this one already keeping me tight. That cow doesn't want much to do with this thing at all. Oh, she's on it. She get it? I think she got it. Oh, buddy. <laughs> She wanted that live bait though. You don't worry about me, you go where you need to go, I'll work around you. How many times do you think you've gone around the boat, Brian? <laughs> You're getting your daily cardio in. You've got a good little... Uh... In the boat, son. In the boat, in the boat. Open your bail, open your bail. <laughs> That's a nice bowl, man. Hey, dude. Good job, man. Good job. I haven't even seen this one. Is it a good size? Yeah, it's a good size. It's not as big as the ones Brian caught, but it's a decent sized cow. Oh, yeah, it is. She didn't like your ugly mug. <laughs> ah! Yeah, that hurt. I know that hurt. This girl's fighting for her life. <laughs> she sees the gaff coming. Yes, sir. End of box. Hey, man. These are all nice ones, dude. Ooh. Good job. Captain, nice, nice job. work. Brian said he wanted mahis. He got mahis. I would have rather had these three than the 40. Did you see how he was like, he was blue and everything like that when he was jumping and now he's yellow? We were so nervous that that ride back in was just going to be terrible because the weather report called for it to calm down and we were expecting basically calm seas, but it was a solid like what, like one to two, like two to three on yeah, the way in? It was calm for two and a half. So. Yeah, but we were skipping on top of the waves the whole way back and I thought we were going to be soaking wet and we actually were pretty good. Did you get wet on your side? No. Now you good? So, this not, morning it out pretty wet. Yeah, this morning was, <laughs> we got a little soaked on the swell this morning, but we're all hyped up on, uh, you know, just excited for big fish this morning, so it wasn't bad. Got that beautiful cow that Brian was nice enough to let me catch because Brian, who's behind the camera right now, was catching all of the fish today. And uh, Brian's actually a subscriber, and he reached out to Trev, wanted to do a trip, and you know what? I was lucky enough to be able to get out on the boat with Trev and so you guys never know if you book a trip with my man Trev over here. Top top of the morning charters. Yeah, I don't know. He, he he doesn't know what to do with his hands. He's like Will Ferrell in uh, Talladega Nights. But if you guys book a trip with my boy Trev, maybe who knows? Maybe I'll end up fishing with you guys. But I'm gonna take the side off this mahi right now, and you guys can kind of see the difference. The two bulls that Brian caught kind of had a right angle on their head, so it was just like up 
like this. And this cow is very, very rounded. So I'm just going to feel kind of like right where the meat starts and work my way on there. Flip it around. And we're noticing, me and Trevor noticing, these are probably some of the biggest dolphin that we've caught in a while. These later season fish, it's like, it's almost, it's pretty cool because you can kind of like track them. Early in the year, like June, they're all tiny. Lots of schooly fish. Later in the summer, they start to get bigger and you don't really see any shorts anymore. Now that we're in November, it's like we're catching the same schools of fish, but they've gotten to this point where they're all like 10 to 15 pounds, which is just absolutely awesome. And as opposed to seeing schools, today we actually were just seeing singles and pairs. So Brian's first fish, that bull that he caught was a, just a single bull by itself. Second bull that he hooked, I popped this cow as a follower. I was following along with him. So pretty cool to kind of see the difference. And it's like almost like we're fishing in the same place. Like you get to observe the lifespan of all these fish. There's our fully clean mahi filet, completely off. Now, when I go to remove the skin, you guys, a lot of you have seen this before, but I line it up with the edge of the fillet table and I just slowly work my way down and I follow with my opposite hand all the way down the fish. And I'm trying to keep the knife pretty flat and I'm leaving just a lit, little bit of meat onto the skin. That's just because there's kind of like a membrane that Maki have that's very, very, we'll say fishy in flavor. It's very strong in flavor work all the way down this point. There's our mahi skin with all that bloodline in it. Get rid of that. And we have our clean filet. Flip it over. See all this red right here doesn't freeze very well. So I just cut that out. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really, really digging this new hoodie. Novelist sent me, it's one of their new colors. Ryan 20 saves you 20% off. Huge sponsor of the channel. They support me, so hope you guys like them. Give them a shot. I have been wanting to do a recipe since I tasted it with my boy Vic. And that was a kind of fish sandwich on toasted ciabatta bread. He did an open face style. We're gonna do a full on fish sandwich. But I just got some mayo here and I'm mixing that with a little bit of cilantro and a little bit of parsley. I think Vic called this an aioli. I don't know if that's actually an aioli, but it tasted really good the last time I had it. So I'm just mixing that all together. I think he was calling Duke. something else. A little bit of, excuse me, uh, peanut calorie. It, I'd prefer. Add some lemon zest. It smells very zesty. I can smell the zest. There's a lot of zest in this house right now. And then we'll add a little bit of fresh lemon juice. And I'm not really measuring exactly what I want to this. I'm just gonna kind of do this to taste. Cut the mahi to kind of the size of the bread, size of the bun for what we'll be serving it on. And I'm just gonna go really simple on the seasoning. Just some salt. Some black cracked pepper. And some garlic powder. And I'm just gonna season the one side for this. Just fresh mahi like this. It's gonna taste great all by itself. Don't need to over season it. Hot pan, fish going season side down. And I'll let that cook probably like 80% of the way through on this one side. 
and then just flip it at the very, very end. Buttering up some ciabatta bread, just putting it in a pan here just to toast them up a little bit, just kind of like these guys. Fish is probably about 80% done. I'll flip that guy over. Oh, yeah. Nice golden brown look to it. And just let that last side finish off. Won't take very long at all. Some baby arugula. I'm gonna add a little bit of white wine vinegar to them. Toss them just a little bit. And I'm gonna add some just straight up sugar. It's gonna put the flavors together nicely, I guess. Toss them in that. And it just takes a little bit of the bitterness out of the arugula. Then we have our aioli. Onto the toasted ciabatta bread. We'll go with a couple slices of tomato. And two nice pieces of dolphin. Top it with that arugula. And close it up. And we have our dolphin sandwich on ciabatta bread. <clears throat> that was absolutely delicious. I really enjoyed it. Trev? Thanks again for taking me out, man. Delicious. I'm sure Brian had a great time. What'd you think of the meal? I thought it was probably the best mahi I've had in a long time. That's good. So you cooked it just right. The ciabatta was fantastic. The uh, the mayonnaise concoction that Chris hates is delicious. <laughs> he has a rusty palate. He doesn't understand fine cuisine. I, I agree 100%. Chris is anti-mayonnaise, so yeah. he went without the aioli. It yeah. was just as good, I guarantee you, with toasted butter. Uh, the yeah. toasted butter was good? Well, here's the thing. If you're going to make this meal, you can't go cheap and get a potato bun. Yeah. You're going to need to spend an extra $3 and get the ciabatta roll, or ciabatta, however you pronounce it. Yeah. Chris has been in South Dakota for like the past three weeks. I don't think he's had a true meal in that whole time, so, you know. Eat some walleye. Yeah. You can eat some walleye. It was better than the dolphin, but the dolphin what? is a second runner up. Oh my gosh. Man. Cold water fish. Mm. I that out. Mm. Yeah, no, no, no. I'll, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and disagree with that, even though I didn't even taste the walleye, but that's enough banter for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see ya in the next one. Later. <laughs> <laughs>